I could just leave that in. You know, I edit these things. And so I could just be like, well, that's, I mean, that's the intro to uh, Bowie's Beats. Thank you, Bowie, for uh, for doing that uh, this week. As long as you uh, catch the door creepily swinging open in the background. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Just, just my cat. <laughs> if you're listening to this podcast, uh, then it's not going to make any sense at all. But on YouTube, there is a cat right dead center in the camera that's uh, apparently introing this podcast. This is a nerdy contraption uh, made for nerds by nerds to talk all things nerd and metal. My name is Josh Redbeard, one of your hosts. And I'm Gret. I'm Margie. Daddy, oh, daddy. oh, no, we're we going at the same time. <laughs> go, Gret. I love that. I love that. You two are so polite. You don't know which one's going to go first and then you go at the same time. So you know, just really the same time. That's it. That's you can tell we're well practiced podcasters. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. This is like that's that's Grant, the other man who's not Josh, <laughs> and I'm Maggie, <laughs> and I have a cat on my lap. And you have a cat on your lap, and Grant has Chucky in the background, and my Rudy is somewhere in the house. I don't know. So where. Grant's so not actually allowed YouTube. to talk. We only talk in we talk, only talk about Grant in the third person. <laughs> <laughs> Grant thinks that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, every episode, uh, we start off uh, with uh, the nerdiest thing. So, Margie, we're going to start with you this week. What is the what is the nerdiest thing you've done this week? All right. I mean, I'm always doing nerd stuff, and you know, I'm back into my wheel of time reading, which is great. But um, and I've also been going down a lot of Star Wars fan theories, rabbit holes. But that's that's like a standard <laughs> day in my life. Uh, but my biggest nerd activity, like it was just peak nerd, was uh, so I used to be a synthetic organic chemist, high past life. Um, and one of one of my chemistry friends posted a video for the sound of silence. Um, but instead of the sound of silence, it was called. Um, hello phosphine my old friend and try and i was howling with laughter like <laughs> crying so triphenylphosphine it's like a handyman chemical that we throw into a lot of chemistry reactions to help make stuff happen and even though it's apparently stable at room temperature it always oxidizes called to this bastard compound which is triphenylphosphine oxide um and it's just the it's just it just hangs out with your compound it's a white powder um, hot tip everything that you make in organic chemistry is a white powder so it's just <laughs> like you can't separate them and it's got this demonic proton nmr spectrum that's three multiplets where you know and the 29 ppm carbon Ugh. if you're if any chemist out there will be like hi everyone else is like Boom. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's anyway, so it was like a video about a bastard thing that happens in the world of chemistry. And I was howling. I guess it's like a HR person <laughs> being like watching a video about a Karen. But anyway, I thought it was really funny. <laughs> I'm a nerd. Hi. Uh, <laughs> um, I love it. And, uh, <laughs> Josh, I feel like you should go second. I'm mixing it up. <laughs> well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick on the reading train. I just finished reading uh, Stephen Fry's Mythos. Uh, mm. so St- St- Stephen Fry's done a trilogy of books about the the Greek myths. Uh, so I just finished the first one. Uh, so there's Mythos, there's Heroes, and then there's Troy. Um, and Mythos is phenomenal like i i'm a i'm a i'm a sucker for like ancient pantheons i like any oh. ancient pantheon give me any sort of like ancient religion i want to know all about it uh and i really liked neil gaiman did norse mythology which was really good like i love neil gaiman is probably one of my favorite authors and he did it really really well but neil gaiman just sort of told the stories whereas stephen mm. fry tells the stories but also just kind of adds in stephen fry commentary every now and again and makes like subtle barbs and like little in jokes and like references and stuff <laughs> yes. like that and it's also just stupidly interesting like the more we discover like like why there's so many flowers out there that are named like specific things that just turned out like some god got angry one day and turned this like mortal into this flower and now we call that flower blah 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 forever and it's like the the amount of things that come from greek mythology that i have i've never realized we have in everyday life like obviously you know like the big stuff um but yeah just like random mortals that have pissed off a god or like not even pissed off a god just like challenged a god because the gods are egotistical pricks mom um, there's daniels growing in the garden again <laughs> <laughs> 
but literally there is there is so many of them and like as you kind of like yeah you read through all these stories you realize how much of our lives have been affected by the greek myths is actually really really freaking interesting um, yeah and so yeah i i would i would highly recommend checking it out i'm so excited to dive straight into the second one um and i'll probably also i mean i've got like four books on the go at the moment so i'll who doesn't yeah yeah but uh yeah that's that's my recommendation for this week stephen fry's mythos stephen fry is the, the fucking the bomb and i love him and uh yeah grant what's the oh, nerdiest yeah. thing you've done this week just uh, called graham <laughs> graham, graham. Yes, I said Graham, Graham but I kind of I kind of say with like a Grant, Graham, 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 Graham. Australian. Grant. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful accent. Grant, yeah, Grant Cracker. <laughs> Graham. Um, so uh, this week I've been getting really into the world of Fallout Four modding, and Fuck I've yeah. realized there's quite a few new cool Fallout Four mods that have been in the works recently. The one I'm most excited about is called Fallout London. So essentially, they've created a dlc sized universe What's where you DLC? play fallout uh downloadable content okay <laughs> sorry <Bye. laughs> where they are uh, yeah where they've they got this whole they've the whole new everything's all new assets all new voice actors set in like cockney ass london right in the middle like there's like knights suits of armors instead of like your vault tech everything's all like the the, the stone masons can you be jack yeah, the ripper uh you, it's an rpg you could be yeah i guess you could be Arnold schwarzenegger if you wanted you could do whatever <laughs> you want <laughs> uh you can be a, a giant lizard that's randy savage so <laughs> or you could be jack the ripper <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. That sounds cool. But also I've when I when I was looking at that, my god sick, I wonder like what other kind of mods you can do. And then I've realized that there's a bunch this team called Capital Wasteland has done all these projects to bring back previous Fallout games and like uh, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout Three and like the downloadable content for Fallout Three and port that into Fallout Four. Which is fantastic because I love those games. The only downside is that sometimes the engine that it was made in is pretty janky. So the <laughs> fact that I can then play those games in like the creation engine on Fallout 4 is it's pretty good. And it all runs super well. Uh, it, I think you're all like still three or four years off being finished. But, you know, that's Bethesda for you. Like, yeah, if you, if you want to play an old game on a new game that still feels like the old game, yeah, Capital Wasteland team, check it out. Oh, if we stay on that for a second, did you see the um that new thing that uh Bethesda just announced? Uh, a new thing. It, yeah, Starfield. It, I don't believe in Starfield. The news. Starfield. That's the one. Ooh. It looks. It's like Fallout in space, and it looks so freaking good. Um, yeah, I have seen that. I've, I'm I'm hoping it's not like another No Man's Sky to some degree. Yeah. It, it, it looks like, it looks what like no it's got Sky a little bit more heart. Yeah, I think they've like they said. There's heaps of planets, but it's not as uh, as many just ice balls. Apparently, I hope because that's awful. The last thing you want to do is like going on a space adventure. It's going to be so awesome. Make my own adventure. Oh, this planet is all ice. Yeah, I mean that's what that's what comets are. Aren't they just ice balls in the sky? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm Bloody damn excited ice. for that because like I like. I'm, I'm I'm trying not to get too excited because Fallout 76 was a steaming pile of dog turds. Um, but yeah, I, I I mean I love space. I love the Fallout games. I love everything that Bethesda's done for the most part. So there's something so lonely about space too, which is mm, like one of those heaven. cool ones to explore. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, uh, Elon Musk, can we please put Josh <laughs> into space? That's the please. request for the day. Please, please, God. Play. I mean, oh, we could go well, yeah we could we could definitely analyze why my favorite movies are things like um have you ever seen the movie moon no i've never even heard of the movie moon oh moon is i've like this is I've, fuck it we're going into this now just because we can um <laughs> moon After is rails. yeah 100 it is literally 
uh, is based in the future where all the Earth's energy needs are harvested from the moon, this thing called Helium-3, and it takes one person on the moon to run this automated station. So the film is about the last two weeks of this guy's two-year cycle on the moon and then the start of the next person's cycle on it. And I don't want to tell you too much, but it's it's like Sam Rockwell is one of the main characters in it. Um, uh, Sam Neill plays like his like robot friend in it, and it's oh, love fucking... Sam phenomenal it is one of the best indie sci-fi films you'll ever see in your life can is i can i go out on a limb event horizon huh oh. event so horizon. is it the prequel to event horizon <laughs> it's it, i love event horizon too. event horizon's absolutely the bomb this, this is uh not terrifying like event horizon because i watched that when i was like 10 years old and it fucked me up <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen Event Horizon. I'm so bad. Any, any suspense in a movie, yeah. I'm like, oh. Um, oh this, this is beyond suspense. Event Horizon is fucking one of the best sci-fi horrors ever made. I like. I'll say is something you have to get used to as well. I'm going to say everything's the best because everything is the best. I'll watch um, it on a live stream on the Northside Nerds <laughs> channel, and then you guys can see me just weeping openly, and then eating an obscene amount of popcorn. Um, yeah. But my guess for that movie is that. Everything goes wrong in the last two weeks out of the 104 that he was stationed there. That's my guess. <laughs> well, you'll have to watch it to find out because it is like it's a really, really one good in 50 game. chance. Imagine yeah, how boring it was. It would be if it didn't go wrong, though. It's just like actually <laughs> <laughs> day life, just eating. I day would love four, that. Just eating, <laughs> eating, peeing into a vacuum. I don't know how Bag. Toilet space work. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're going to move into the short beat now and now that we've talked about peeing in space um, so this is sort of like a rotating segment we're trying a couple of different things see what works what doesn't but uh, this week we wanted to go, I want to go into to battle reports because uh, it's one thing that we nerds do is we play a lot of games in different ways whether it's you know video games or it's Dungeons and Dragons it's Magic the Gathering whatever so I feel like the three of us we can get together and sort of like we, we can report on what's going on in our kind of various games in life uh, so maybe, maybe Grant, do you, want to, do you want to kick us off and uh, you know give us a, a battle report on the game that you're currently playing and what what's what's currently going on in the world? We need well, some hype just, music. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> drums report. in the deep. So <laughs> I'll, I'll write something. Yeah, I'll write something for the next the next episode. <laughs> um, so I just just last week finished up our first D and D campaign with my new group. Which was pretty wild. The only downside to us just finishing the campaign is we actually didn't manage to kill the last boss. So uh. <laughs> I think he's going to try he's rolling for you. <laughs> yeah, I think he's going to try roll him into like the next campaign. But yeah, like the objective of the game was, you know, essentially get to this tower, destroy the tower. We destroyed the tower, couldn't destroy the boss, unfortunately, at the same time because one of our characters kept on rolling like crap. Wasn't me, but um, my my character is a half orc barbarian that is named Buttercup. Uh, <laughs> Lovely. And um, yeah, he's incredibly overpowered because he has like nineteen strength and seventeen constitution and fifteen dexterity. So he's pretty, it's pretty busted with his plus two great sword that I got from a different campaign before we moved over, and then the DM realized that all the like semi bosses I was like one combo killing so we had to, he, he very much he very quickly gave every single NPC poison to try and balance out them not being able to damage me <laughs> I'm like you know that's what, what fair that's... they get so OP like yeah nothing but they kind of they're kind of like plateau like I feel like early game they're all like super overpowered but then like they don't get any more powerful and then everyone else slowly catches up but yeah, we're definitely in the early game now, so I'm just like slamming everything, and then yeah. an age comes out, and I'm just like, okay, I'll see you guys later. I can't do anything now. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> apart apart from the D and D campaign, we just finished. I've also been playing uh, it's this game called Stalker. It's like a, it's like um, like it's an acronym Stalker. I don't know what it actually means. Essentially, like you were in like Pripyat, Chernobyl, post apocalyptic is everything that I play apparently. Um, and it's just like yes, yeah, mutants and shit, zombies, and you're essentially. I'm playing in a, a mod called Stalker Anomaly, which is mixing like three or four stalker games into one game, and it's just like this big like open world quests where you just pick up quests from other people. It's like full sandbox. There's no proper story, but uh, I, it's it's really it's actually quite a harder game to explain. But yeah, if you like open world, if you like. 
uh, zombies, if you like creepy, suspenseful music, creepy mutants that like have brain powers or whatever, uh, yeah, get get on it because it's awesome. It's like Metro that's, 23 that's means escape from me. Tarkov. It's sick. <laughs> too scary. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's all I've got today. So how about you, Margie? Um, well, I figured I can't really give you guys a battle report without introducing you to who I'm playing in D and D at the moment. Um, I'm playing a half elf druid. Um, her name's Mela Cianadel. Um, uh, she has a dru- she has a child's name for an elf because uh, her dad was a high elf, but her mum was a human, and her mum was a fucking idiot because her dad just kind of knocked her mum off and then fucked off because I don't know got curious about humans briefly uh and so she only has an elven child's name so she's trying to prove herself because she has daddy issues so she just wants her dad to like you know upgrade her to like an adult elf name (laughs) and she's a druid so you know she was like to hone my druid powers i'm gonna go be a hermit in the woods because you can't be a druid unless you have hermit background like i mean you can but like it's so much more fun to role play someone who's lived in isolation for years because then you just get to walk around being really inappropriate. And somehow <laughs> I've got I've got plus four charisma. So I'm like 18 charisma. So I just like I always try and flirt with things and it always works out too well. And then I have to turn into like a bird and yeet out of there. Um, and I'm also really wise, but very weak. And I have very weak constitution and strength. So um and uh, yeah, so anyway, so pretty much I just wrote a half elf with daddy issues and my favorite tricks are anything involving fire because uh, I just like, like cantrip create bonfire. I know that I abuse it and I have no regrets. Like I just start <laughs> fires. My DM's like, buggy, please no. We've got like a, like the rest of the groups just getting to the point, like stop. So like, like I was like, all right, I'll change my cantrip for the next round because we have a DM who lets us change spells in between um sessions and i was like he's like what what have you changed it to it's like produce flame (laughs) (laughs) like and uh cut cut out the middle man with the bonfire (laughs) exactly and um i uh yeah i also abuse shape water because shape water is a spell that you can absolutely abuse as far as your dm will let you so i encourage any druids out there or anyone who can have it to get behind it because you could just make it do whatever you want and I chose Circle of the Moon, obviously, because then you get better shape-shifting abilities sooner. That's like a druidic thing. You know, every class has got its sub-things. Um, yeah, Circle of the Moon means that you can uh, shape-shift better earlier. And I was like, I don't know what to do. And then I saw Giant Toad, and I was like, I need to turn into that as quickly as possible. And yeah, but last session, I pretty much just used Shape Water to pick locks and break in into a lot of places because we were, we're having like an in-between episode, like, a you know, kind of like exploring the town. And yeah, I just used it to break into places. Um, <laughs> that was, yeah. <laughs> and nearly set a few things on fire and did, you know, a lot of like casual stealing. So I'm... I'm not I'm not the biggest battler at the moment, but stay tuned. Um, <laughs> I've got the highest kill count of anyone in my D and D group. Um, <laughs> yeah. Josh, that means, that means that you are quite tough, though, or everyone else is very weak. Or maybe everyone just rolls shitly. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've got rigged dice. <laughs> yeah, in, in, um, um, in our campaign, we had one guy that was like made this like super powerful necromancer, like this, I had, and he was like talking up for ages. And then when he got introduced into the campaign, he just for our first like five sessions, he just rolled hot garbage. It was <laughs> so funny. Crit miss, crit miss, crit miss. Yeah, it was like, so bad. Oh jeez. Um, yeah, Josh, what's your, what's your battle report? Who have you beaten up this week? Uh, so I'm, uh, uh, I'm going to move from D and D to, to magic the gathering, uh, for this round. Cause I finally got to test out, uh, I, 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 I'm a sucker for a janky deck. Like I, I don't like, um, I don't like infinite combos. I don't ever really like winning magic the gathering that much. I just like decks that do <laughs> the thing. And once I've done the thing, I'm like, yeah, I've done the thing. Like I like people playing the cards in magic. I don't want to win. I just want to see cards do the thing. So I don't run a lot of like interaction or whatnot. Cause I don't want to stop people doing what they're going to do. So I, um, I had these two ideas that I've uh, created lately and I'm pretty proud of one of them in particular that I've called my, I am invincible deck. Uh, yes, referencing uh, <laughs> Goldeneye as the best thing ever. I found a, a commander that I built a deck around. So the commander, his ability is that whenever I am dealt damage, I create that many 1-1 one, one creature tokens. It's a mono-white deck. And the good thing about mono-white is they have so many creatures and enchantments that yeah. when a creature enters the battlefield under your control, 
you gain a life. So if you hit me for five points of damage, I get five creatures into the battlefield, which means that I gain five life back, which means that I'm in exactly the same life with more creatures on the battlefield. So I played it on the weekend and it's technically 2-0 and o because I'm not counting one of the games when there was an accidental infinite combo on like turn three. Uh, and that <laughs> at all. But I wonder the- who pulled that off. <laughs> Jared. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Didn't, didn't even know it was in the deck apparently. Um, but yeah, yeah it, but no, it was- there was a point where I not only had uh, a, an enchantment that was giving me one life when a creature entered the battlefield, but then I had a creature that gave me two life whenever a creature entered the battlefield at the same time. So if you hit me for five, I was gaining 10 life and getting five creatures, and it was the wow. fucking best. And then people yeah, obviously wild. didn't... <laughs> people- people didn't want to hit me. And so then I have, I've put into the deck ways of just hurting myself. I literally have this enchant, this uh, artifact that says two whenever kind. a land, yeah, whenever a land enters a battlefield under a player's control, it deals two damage to that player. Cause it's a completely useless fucking card. Unless you need damage done to yourself. I'm like, yeah, I'll play a land. Yeah, I'll play a land. Yeah, I'll play a land. <laughs> uh, and so I was, I was very, very proud of how that deck ran. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, I, I have uh, proxied two cards because I'm not paying $300 for an Ancient Tomb and a Mana Crypt because that's just... Uh-oh, don't let stunning. the nerds hear you say that. You nah, proxies for didn't life. want to pay I, stupid money for cardboard? I what will, about the I, collectors, Josh? What about the collectors? When you well, try the, and sell those fake cards, the business is going to go under. That's it. Wizards <laughs> of the Coast are dead. Peace out. Yeah, Let's they're not going to be out of profit off the secondhand market anymore because <laughs> instead of investing in real things, they invested in cardboard. Yeah, hundred percent. So I, we we can have a whole uh, we can have a whole episode on uh, proxies and you three know, D printers and all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, they work very very well in this deck. Uh, it's not yeah. yeah, it's definitely it's definitely not like C E D H level, but it's definitely probably one of my most powerful decks. But like, it'll die instantly to like fucking any sort of interaction because there's not a lot of protection in the deck <laughs> one counter um, spell one counter yeah. boy and then the the other deck that i made for white the other deck that i made was a <laughs> uh it was a, a partner pairing combo of rogra who is a zero mana red creature and yoshimaru who's a one mana white creature so i have red white colors and the whole idea of this deck is that everything can only cost one or zero mana so everything in the deck is just a oh. one drop but the thing about it, right, is so like, because Yoshimaru's thing is that whenever another legendary enters the battlefield, he gets plus one, plus one. So Yoshimaru, so if you start with just one white mana, instantly on your first turn, white mana, then you play Yoshimaru, then you play Rogra straight away, and he's instantly he's a two two. Yeah, he's just fucking free. And then I just put in every legendary land that I could find that like fit into these colors as well as colorless to the point where I have like legendary lands that don't even tap for mana like the um i can't remember it's the one of the the eldrazi lands that like makes eldrazi's cost less but doesn't actually tap for colorless mana but because it's a legendary land into the deck it went and uh that deck actually (laughs) did very very well but again it doesn't survive a board wipe the second i get board wiped i'm out of the game pretty (laughs) done yeah yeah but it's it's the deck building that's the fun part yeah that's i think that's yeah that is my favorite thing the challenge is the jank like i don't i don't want to build a meta deck i don't want i don't even want to build a good deck i just wanted to do dumb things and i've i'm probably proud of these are the two dumbest decks that i've built so far um so i'm gonna go down a very dark rabbit hole of building dumb decks Oh, as long Don't as you have fun, though, that's, that's what matters. That's going towards the light. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, but so for this episode, we've uh, we're, we're going to get a little bit uh, wholesome. I feel in this episode, I, I've put the question uh, to you two, uh, and of course, I'll answer it myself because I'm me. Uh, which piece of pop culture has had the largest effect on your life personally? Um, and I feel this is going to make for some interesting discussions. So uh, maybe, maybe Margie, let's uh, let's start with you. Where have you decided to to take this week's topic and this week's question? This this is a hard one. Like like the pop culture that's had the biggest effect on me. Like obviously, you know, uh, neurodivergent adopt traits from whatever pop culture you're <laughs> consuming at the time. Um, this is my, my personality my- now. <laughs> To quote my psychologist, there's something very neurodivergent about you. 
<laughs> I was like, thank you very much. Okay. Meds now, give me speed. Um, I mean, what? <laughs> um, so, like, I I was never, like, a super Disney princess kid or anything, which, like, I just find it so fascinating, like, when – like you know there's like people I work with and stuff and like someone puts on like a Disney soundtrack and people just start howling along to it and they're like oh my god like the sweet memories and I'm like ah uh, like <laughs> you didn't it's watch like, battle bots uh the the only Disney princess that I liked was Mulan but she's not a princess she was like you know disobeyed people and ran away from home I was like Robin Hood the sword and the stone that they were like my kind of movies um and like so a little bit different there and then like I was obviously of the time where Jurassic Park was huge I had Jurassic Park bed sheets and pajamas um and that was so I think that definitely influenced my dinosaur interest (laughs) (laughs) um and then Star Wars we just watched as kids and uh like ran around and me my cousin and my brother would dress up as Luke Leia and Hans and like run around and and Leia doesn't count as Leia even though she technically is a Disney princess now is <laughs> something very different uh she was like a Jedi come on like you know, you know we, hmm. we know she's amazing hmm. um she was a like, princess before Disney so that doesn't count exactly and also hmm. she wasn't even I'm you know anyway I'm not going into the political systems of the Star Wars universe um <laughs> And That's then- exactly what this podcast is for. Ah! Yeah, I, was, I was hoping we get deep into the Trade Federation today. Uh, yeah, we're, we're going uh, – the Trade Federation actually had the largest impact on my life. But, like, I remember going to go see the original, like, the – well, not the original, the new trilogy at the cinemas and stuff coming out. Like, they, they were, like, my movie influences. But – um, and then books were my other one. Like, I don't think I can round it down to, like, one, one thing. book. Like, I mean, like, Lord of the Rings, I first heard about it when I was, like, eight because, like, um, it was coming out. It was, you know, like, six months before it was released and there's all this hype or, you know, like, it was going on. And I was like, oh, yeah, I can, I can, I read The Hobbit and I was like, oh, that was, that was a kid's book, at, you know, at the age of eight. I was like, Pff. and so, like, I read Lord of the Rings and I was like, like, <laughs> the, 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 pin, the pin, the pin drops and all of a sudden it's like, holy shit, like fantasy and yeah and I just I just read voraciously um I read a lot uh it's I don't know that was that, that's like not a very good one I mean obviously there's tv shows and music and shit and a few games <laughs> I game more as a as a fucking eight-year-old than I did as an yeah. adult um, <laughs> uh, but uh I want to hear more about like what you guys like where you where you guys are going with this I'm I'm curious uh throw it to Grant because I threw it to Josh last time <laughs> Oh well, I'd I'd say like my foray into pop culture probably started with Cartoon Network as a child. Um, oh, you, you know, had? Did you have cable? Yeah. Oh, fuck! I never had it. I was just <laughs> ABC Kids and uh, and Cheese TV. I didn't have a lot of food, but I did have Foxtel. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Bleak. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, yeah, you know, as a child shows like Samurai Jack, um, Star Wars, Clone Wars, animated series, not the CGI version, but like the, uh, cell shaded 2D version, the, the OG series. Oh, it's so good. It's It's fantastic. It's the first time you see General Grievous, like even before like Revenge of the Sith comes out, you're like, who's this dude? Oh wait, there's just this plane crash victim out of stake land probably that they've turned into this, <laughs> um, this four-armed Jedi um, annihilating machine. Yeah, so that was sick. And then from there, obviously, I've gone to Star Wars. Love that. You know, Star Wars got me into Lego. You know, I, I've always, as a child, loved everything mechanical as now, you know, I've worked with robots and stuff like that. So, you know, it's, you know, it all adds up. But my biggest breakthrough into who i am now is a movie that i'm pretty sure everyone except for me hates and it is the doom movie amazing yes you're right that movie scared me so much (laughs) or maybe it was maybe it was doom 3 i don't know i just i remember seeing one of them in the cinemas and i was just like yeah no it's (laughs) yeah everyone hates that movie but for me 
like I was just that right age. It was like was it's two thousand and five, isn't it? So I was I was like nine. Yeah. Like I was I was young. Yes, Josh, I was nine. Um, I'm just pulling faces. Yeah, you're gonna see. Yeah, I mean, I, there's already like five things that both of you have said. They're just like, man, I am the old person in this conversation. I think I, I, think I was like Please. twelve when I saw it. Or yeah. Like something. Please and, keep yeah. going. Yeah. So it was just always on we'll the movie channel, the and I never like because obviously it was that bad movie. It was just always on the daytime movie channel. And I never saw like the whole thing, but I saw like parts of it like 15, 20 times. I would just flick over, like, oh, Doom's on, you know, I'll go watch that. And then for Christmas one year, my mum got me a like an Xbox original with Doom 3, which is like this survival Ooh, yeah. horror video game, which is a massive departure from and the normal Doom games. And it's set on Mars, games. right? Yes, yes, yeah. set on Mars. And from there, it's just like that is just like, all my movie tastes, all like the post-apocalyptic stuff, all the you know demons and stuff, the music, Carl Urban, love Carl Urban in everything. <laughs> the boys, oh yeah, oh yeah. it's oh. so good. Season three, oh, I don't want to talk about it because oh, a really? we're behind technically because this is going to come out and the season will be finished by the time <laughs> this episode comes out. But um, yeah, just yeah, do movie and then after that, Guitar Hero. That was a I actually learned how to play Guitar Hero before I learned how to play guitar. So, Same. like getting into like <laughs> like really heavy metal. Like I like I listened to a bit of it in like high school, but like I didn't really get into heavy heavy stuff until I got Guitar Hero: Warriors of Rock, which has like Arch Enemy, Children of Bottom, and all that stuff in it. And funnily enough, the first song I ever tried to learn on guitar was if you want peace prepare for by children of bottom and it's very hard and i'm <laughs> sure that i had played it like dog shit and you probably felt like a fucking riff god oh, i did oh i thought i was smashing i'm like oh yeah i could play some songs i can't believe that guitar we both, guitar hero. like i can't believe that we both played guitar hero before i mean i could play like a few open chords but like yeah, oh, yeah guitar yeah. hero before playing guitar it's probably why i like playing bass so much because yeah, i feel like playing guitar hero <laughs> the motor skills to play guitar but now when i go back to playing guitar hero like i can't play as quickly as i used to play guitar hero like i'm, You're like, I'm, I'm it's, somehow it's fucking slower. up my strumming pattern it's my strumming yeah. pattern <laughs> but it also like... probably un- i can understand now why i had like rsi in my right shoulder elbow and wrist is probably from poor technique from playing guitar here and are you sure it wasn't are you sure it wasn't from just being a teenage boy no i wish (laughs) i I wish it was that easy to reverse (laughs) (laughs) maybe maybe that maybe the elbow yeah what what, what about what about you josh were you uh i don't know i'm expecting my rsi (laughs) sailor moon no i'm fucking sailor moon causes rsi yeah Yeah. no like i i don't know mine mine went through (laughs) it I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh, pause, <laughs> pause for effect, and then move on with my life. <laughs> no, no, I had like, I don't know, I yeah, I've got like my top three, but I like, I, I guess I have to give like a couple of honorable mentions. Like, kind of looking through my life and like different ways that different things have affected. Like, I, I was a pretty of a loner as a kid. Uh, as most nerds are, I didn't have a lot of friends. Uh, and so I played a, a lot of video games. And so like my, my uncle works for IBM and he like gave us this like sick computer oh, cool. that had all these like, like computer games that were like modern at the time, but I'm talking like, <laughs> I had like Wolfenstein 3D and like, oh Commander yeah. Keen and like, Commander like, Keen. When, Holy shit. When those, when those came out, I had them on this PC and it was sick. Um, I could talk about the computer I had before that, that had like literally a green screen. It wasn't even a color screen because yes, I'm that <laughs> Commodore 64. <laughs> I had one of those. I am that <laughs> fucking old. Um, but yeah, so my uncle kind of like, yeah, that kind of really sparked my, my love of video games. But I think like the video game that had the most impact on me wasn't even in the video game world. It was Tony Hawk's pro skater is like the whole Whoa, reason I, that like, is on my list. Yeah, the, the main reason I listen to any music that I listen to today yeah. is because of the, like the the punk music from that. Like I I I've spent the last twenty three years in the punk scene pretty much because of that game. Like it like that, and uh, in grade six, this guy called Kyle showed me uh, TSOL Blue. No, no, yeah, I mean that too. 
uh he, he was definitely the kind of car that would punch a wall but uh no nah, he had um punkarama volume two and he uh showed me the song code blue by tsol which is about having sex with dead people uh so if you can imagine two 11 year olds in a like a grade six classroom just giggling away at this song it was fucking oh hilarious. dude this uh funny like unlocked memory so when i was in grade six <laughs> for some memory. reason <laughs> i had like we had like you I don't know if you had them, but like, you know, like the plastic tubs that were like under yeah, the Yeah, tidy trays. Yeah. 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 And in there, for some reason, I had a, a copy of Drowning Pools Sinner, like the CD. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> and like, I got bullied so hard, like by these kids of my class, They're like, oh, the emo, blah, 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 fucking <laughs> this shit, like this butt rock <laughs> in, your, <laughs> in your locker. I love yeah, that. no, you've just unlocked that, that memory for butt me. Rock. You're welcome. That's it's beautiful. what I'm here for. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, yeah. Transformers were obviously a massive part of my childhood as well. Like I was, yeah. I was like reading the comics, uh, like the original cartoon movie. I used to borrow from the video store like every single week, pretty much. I would just watch it on repeat. Like it was like a weekly hire. I'd hire it, take it back, hire it again. Um, and like that video store became a lot of my kind of childhood experiences. And I think that's like the, if I go from like, Number three to number one. Number three, bit of pop culture, which is a really, really weird one to say because it's probably not a film that a lot of people have seen this particular like one of, but Children of the Corn Part Six. And uh, specific what? right, but specifically part six, because this my is very specific. Right. It's like one of my uh few friends in primary school, uh, it was a bit of a loner like me, he borrowed that from the video store without really because you like when you're like 10 years old 11 years old you don't really think oh like part six means that there is five movies before this so he bought what it's cool. like he, yeah. yeah he borrowed children of the corn part six and we watched it and like i think it was it definitely wasn't the first horror film i'd seen like before that i'd, I'd already seen like like the exorcist and a couple of other bits and pieces but that was the first one that kind of made me dive into the wider world of horror as a sort of like series so i went back and watched all of the children of the corns i found them all my video store had all of them apart from number three so i had to go to a different video store to find children of the corn part three and then after that you know i dived into you know last week Marky, you spoke about uh dawn of the dead like i dived into the entire of the dead series so i oh, watched neither yes. the dead dawn of the dead day of the dead uh land of the dead was more original but then i watched like return of the living dead one through five as well like i watched literally every series that i could find down to like i watched all the leprechauns like i watched literally <laughs> is land of the dead the one where they like end up like figuring out how to use guns and they got like that weird yeah. train thing yeah, yeah i remember watching that when i was young i'm like this is sick. And then I watched the other year. I'm like, this sucks. This is yeah, sick. Really it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't a good film. It was not a good film. Um, but yeah. It's the, a good, bad film. Yeah, 100%. 100%. But yeah, I think that was like, it's weird to say that Children of the Corn Part 6 is, yeah, is responsible for me diving into the deeper world of horror beyond like the real like popular stuff. It was like, all right, I want to watch entire series, whether they're good or bad. Cause I think that's kind of like <laughs> part of the whole horror trope is you watch the yeah. sequels because they're like their sequels and that's what you do. So I've watched yeah. like, cause yeah. And again, like I said, didn't have a lot of friends. So on my two weeks worth of holidays, I would go to the video store on the first day of the holidays and hire like you get like 10 weeklies for 10 bucks or something like that. So I would hire 10 weeklies, bring them back, hire another 10 weeklies. And I would just spend my week watching like horror films and whatnot. Oh yeah. Grant, um, we should explain what a video store is. So, um, <laughs> yes. back in the day. <laughs> back Honestly, in my day. Like, one, uh, there's a, probably another thing of like one of my, like the next step after Guitar Hero would be like for my pop culture wise, would be like getting into RPGs, which was Mass Effect and playing mm -hmm. that which I also yeah. just randomly rented from a blockbuster. <laughs> like it was video easy. Uh, it was a weekly rental Mass Effect 2. Um, that, yeah, big part of my, my pop culture and what Maybe. got me here as a person. But yeah, <laughs> no, uh, many people only probably even slightly younger than me would never know what a blockbuster is except for no. maybe like a small kiosk inside <laughs> the, like a Coles supermarket. That's oh like a vending God. machine. Yeah. Do you know uh, Netflix tried to sell the company to Blockbuster for like, it was like $80 million. $80 million. No, it was $80 million. Dollars, no, $80 million dollars and they said no the That's first it. time. Yeah. And they came back $500 million and they said, oh, no, nah, this streaming thing's not going to work. Uh, and then <laughs> and then they went bankrupt. So ridiculous. Yeah. So ridiculous. Um, um, 
but yeah, sorry. So the so true to the comedy, it'd be three, and then my my number two, my my runner up, which is a weird one to say. My runner up is Star Wars, obviously. Like I yeah. have, I have a very very vivid memory of, and they, like we. <laughs> I was getting for the for the listener. I was getting made fun of in the chat earlier for being the old man, and I'm about to like admit just how old I am. When I still like, I would, I would go to my grandma. My grandma lives in Sydney. I live in Melbourne, so we would go to my grandma's every year. My grandma had the had the the original trilogy recorded off the TV, and I would just watch <gasps> them the all. I would watch them all the time, um, just like like constantly again, just on repeat, on repeat, on repeat. I used to be able to quote the entire thing like just by myself. But the funny thing isn't even recording it off the TV. It's that I still remember the ads that were playing like yeah. during it. And there was an ad for Super Mario Brothers 2 on the NES. Like that's oh. how long ago I was watching Star Wars. Honestly, Mario- I did, you, did you, you have a toy friend? lightsaber? I had a yeah. toy lightsaber and I fucking loved it. And I had one that you could like make it go out. And so it was like a collapsible yes, lightsaber. Yes, yeah, I had one of those as well. Absolutely. Jeez, I, I loved, I loved I had the, running around with that. I had like the figurines, but I didn't actually have like a toy lightsaber. No, oh, we we had um, a figurine Millennium Falcon, and you know, like all the secret compartments in the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. It yeah. had all of the secret compartments in it, and me and my brother loved it, and we fought over it all the time. Um, <laughs> God, I love that thing. I can smuggle so many imaginable imaginable <laughs> people inside here. Imaginable people. <laughs> imaginable people. <laughs> uh, but I I thought long and hard about it, and I realized what the um the number one piece of pop culture that has affected my life in the most dramatic of ways doesn't actually need an explanation. I'm just going to say this and most people are going to understand the opening scene of final destination two. Which one's that? The one with the logs. Oh, oh fuck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No more. <laughs> I, I, I will never behi- drive behind a log truck ever. Ever because of that. There is like nothing that affects my life more than that one (laughs) scene in a film. There is nothing. It's legitimately nothing. And uh, yeah, so first place for which piece of pop culture has affected my life, the opening scene from Final Destination 2. All of the Final Destination movies, like... Oh my god! Like the amount of times I'm just doing something, and I'm like, "Gee, imagine if like that knife were flicked up off the bench and stabbed me in the eye through the skull." And I'm like, "Final destination!" <laughs> like, shake fist to sky. It taught me to always put my cutlery away when I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Like, um, speaking of like movies and pop, like this is not pop culture, but this is something from my childhood, which has greatly shaped my life. So I grew up in Queensland, in case you can't tell by how nasal I am. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and and for those who aren't from Australia, Queensland is a northern hellscape. It's giant and it's got all the crocodiles and all the poisonous jellyfish. And it's where Steve Irwin was murdered by a stingray. So it's, it's not like good. Te- it's, it's like the dry, Texas of windy, Australia. and flooding. It's kind of like the, the Florida time. of Australia. Let's <laughs> yeah, be real. Yeah, actually, flo- yeah, the Florida of Australia is probably closer. Yeah, it's it's pretty swampy. It's like <laughs> anyway. And so I had so this the movie. Crocodiles are three times the size of alligators. <laughs> <laughs> and they're a lot worse. Um, so I had this movie recorded from TV. Well, it was a documentary called Australia's Deadliest Animals. I don't know if you guys remember this TV series. It was like Australia's Deadliest Animals. And it had like, you know, your standards in there. Then it also had stuff like cassowaries. Um, I was actually, when, as soon as we finished talking about crocodiles, I was going to say, have you ever seen a cassowary before when living up in Queensland? Because those oh, fuckers are terrifying. They're, they're, um, my uncle and aunt have them on their farm in far north Queensland. Because Queensland's so they're big. They're insane. Like, they're so big. But no, I, I mean, now your, have... your aunt and uncle. <laughs> oh, the that, oh, they're fine. <laughs> cassowaries aren't going to hurt you unless you like go after their eggs. With, or unless their you're within like 50 meters of them. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, they're they're just dinosaurs. But um, it also had stuff in there like uh, blue ringed octopus uh, and stuff you should be really afraid of, like stonefish, which is fish that look like stones, which are venomous, and conefish. (laughs) And I have an irrational fear of conefish. Like, oh my God, anytime I'm at the beach, I'm like, oh, could be a conefish, even though like not everywhere is a Queensland hellscape, but like (laughs) fucking jeez. And then if you try to get out of the water, you just run into the inland Taipan. (laughs) <laughs> we you just have a Taipan infestation at my parents' house one year. <laughs> I love that. I love that. You've just reminded me of another song that I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna link that in the show notes as well. Uh and we've got to update that Spotify playlist. We've talked about that Spotify playlist. I'm gonna put that Spotify playlist together of all the songs we've spoken about so far. Um but the the Australian comedy troupe Scared Weird Little Guys. 
um, had a bit where they talked about uh, the like the you know the the Australia, tourism Australia had asked them to write a song to like you know to, and you know, to bring people to Australia and so they focused on the wonderful wildlife and the you know the fabulous flora that Australia has to offer and uh, yeah the chorus is come to Australia you might accidentally get killed and then they just lift <laughs> every deadly animal that there is and that's the whole song it's fucking so good. <laughs> Uh, yep that that works um having like you know growing up on a farm in queensland i've uh dealt with snakes in the bed before what can i say <laughs> that's that's not that's not a metaphor that's what she um, said yeah <laughs> yeah yeah nah uh, but an- another another piece of childhood stuff um because obviously like transformers star wars like these these were all big things and real mm. popular with other people and then when i was a teenager i discovered Air- avatar the last airbender i mean i'm not even talking about music Golden. today because i that's a whole music is like a whole episode is like getting into like what were yeah. our gateway bands but like discovered avatar the last airbender and it's like the first show i've ever seen that what excuse me there's some technical technical difficulties technical Sorry, difficulties. Just, just just start from discover the, the um, last yeah Avenger. and discovered avatar the last airbender and it's the first show i've ever seen where i was like this is the best thing i've ever seen and other people were like eh about it and i was just like because like <laughs> I, 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 i'm used i'm used to that with books but i just assume like you know like shit like the princess bride and stuff like that people recognize the genius and you know you don't have to justify but like and i was just like it really shaped me and it turned me into the soccer that i am today like cynical <laughs> and grumpy <laughs> Uh, boomerang fueled um uh yeah and I think that was like a yeah like like I mean obviously with music I discovered a lot of stuff that other people didn't like but you know like being into a piece of pop culture that other people weren't on board with I guess you got that with your doom movies <laughs> <Great>. yeah <laughs> <laughs> I've still, still get that now people still are on board with it at least yeah, people but... like retroactively liked Avatar they still don't like the doom movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Every, at least I can say I've seen place. it. Yeah. yeah. For some reason, seen like no more movies. Yeah. yeah. Did we? Did you have any like? Did you have any pop culture, Josh? I guess back in your day, there was only like one TV show. So like, what Gilligan's Island? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that. I mean, yeah, I'm kind of close to that. No, I, like, think, I, I think back then it was back when Pulp Fiction was a uh, like a book category instead of a film, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> Yes, I was. I, I was born before Pulp Fiction. Yes, Grant. Yes, I was. <laughs> no, like I was. I was thinking about cartoons. I was. Uh, it was fun. I was speaking to another uh, member of Northside Nerds in a in a in a new thing we're going to be launching shortly about like children's TV shows, and the one oh, that yeah. I like. We were talking about like Samurai Pizza Cats and Street Sharks and and like all like the the kids tv shows we were watching (laughs) the old shit and i vintage and i i mentioned one that went even over here he's like closer to my age and even this one over his head uh chip and dale rescue rangers um oh yeah the chipmunks yeah, the chipmunks, and then there's like the bear, uh, and there's like yeah, there's a couple of other animals in as well. But then he looked it up, and apparently they made like a movie of it like this year or last year. I or literally like saw that on Disney Plus the other day. I'm like, why does this exist? That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it doesn't need to happen. But, but it's it like funny because I'm pretty sure it was like Alvin and the Chippendale or something like that. Like it was like no, Al- Al- Alvin and the Chipmunks is a different thing. So Chippendale like, rescue yeah. they mix is... them in because they look Amazing. the exact same. It's the same yeah. anime. Are you, are you saying all Chipmunks look alike? Jesus, yeah. you can't Canceled. say that. Cancelled. That's it. Yeah. Cancelled. Yeah, I'm acornist. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, like, I don't, I don't think we kind of like, re- especially back then. You know, when there was four tv channels and that was it there wasn't streaming yeah. services don't laugh um <laughs> not, all, not all of us could have foxtel jeez yeah, yeah. and so they like they they must have replayed stuff a lot because i went back and looked into it and chip and Dale, like the rescue rangers was only a tv show for two seasons they did like 13 episodes in the first season like 40 in the second and then five in the last like they did like a movie special at the end but it felt like like that went for years like i remember that for such a long time in my childhood and so now i need to go back and just realize my entire childhood is like a lie or it's just i watched re runs so much was, and just didn't realize chip and dales was that a uh hanna barbera uh maybe that's a great there's this, question there's this really weird like period of time like i think it's 
87 to 93 where everything Hanna Barbera put out was just reruns because someone bought all the rights, but they didn't have anyone there to run the station. So they just <laughs> reran the crap out of all the stuff that that they had made in like the seventies and the eighties. <laughs> yeah, no, I like, I should have re- I should have remembered from the art style. No, it's a Disney thing because it, it definitely has that like that late eighties, early nineties Disney look yeah, about it. Like okay. a lot of do, those. Do kind these of... do these little guys? Do they do Rescue Rangers Down Under? Is that the same characters? Have you guys seen that movie? No, there's like no. an evil guy who wants to steal some like hawk egg, and then there's like an evil Goanna, and this evil <laughs> Goanna. So there's like two things I was really afraid of as a kid. This evil Goanna, I mean, obviously, um, like cone shells being poisonous, but also the the wolf from Sword in the Stone. You know the one that's like real decrepit, and he's like walks yeah. up a hill and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> and then he sees they've all run down the hill. Like, like I was so afraid of that wolf, and also that <laughs> fucking Goanna looked so evil. I need to, you guys need to look. I need to, I need to find this. Yeah, because it kept trying to eat the eggs because it was evil. <laughs> And go out as our assholes. Like, they will just right. go into a bird's nest. Hi. Oh, there's the bird nerd coming out. <laughs> <laughs> when I say that I enjoy twitching, bird I mean nerd. that I enjoy bird watching, not, <laughs> not, not twitch streaming. Because <laughs> I Resident did not know that was a thing. I, was, I nearly became one, let's be real. Um, <laughs> I um, love that this is just diversion to just like a, a like a nostalgia thon and a nostalgia uh, chat. <laughs> nostalgia chat. I mean, that's what, that's what I really thought this episode would be, and that's why I feel like the um the the last beat for this episode I feel like kind of ties into this uh you know this whole idea of nostalgia a little bit as well because you know, every every week we're putting out a question whether it's like you know a would you rather who would win in a fight or just like something a bit more open i feel like this one's a a little bit more open and um if you're listening at home if you're listening on the with podcast arms you're listening, wide open. yeah with our arms wide open <laughs> Underrated song, but whatever. We no, won't that go won't into that. Uh, I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, follow at Northside Nerds on Instagram, and we're putting the question out every Friday. And this week, the question has been: uh, If there's one thing that you could bring back from your childhood, like one toy, one movie, something you remember having as a child that you don't have anymore, what would it be, and why? Because um, I think serotonin. In places. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Margie's answer is the happy chemical. Uh, Margie, do you have a do you have a runner up? If it wasn't serotonin, what would uh, what would the, the one thing from your childhood? Don't be mean. I'm I'm kidding. My <laughs> first <laughs> memory of my first memory of depression was when I was six years old. So I don't think it's ever been okay. there. Okay. Um, I'm I'm going bleak, and I'm saying body confidence because I used to run around naked. Um, saying, I'm Peter Pan. I've got a green shirt, green hat, and green pants on, and this is my dagger. And we and I'd run off, and my dad was like, that's going to be a real problem when she goes to kindy. Um, and it wasn't, <laughs> thank you. But, like, I just was so comfortable in my body and had that imagination, and it was great. And I, I miss that childhood innocence, body confidence. Like, I know it's sad, but, like, I was so happy. <laughs> you took that to a really dark place, but I, I, I appreciate the answer at the same time. I do. I, I honestly, honest. like, I thought of everything. I was like, what, do I want back my amazing Australia's Deadliest Animals VHS tape, which I accidentally recorded over once because I was a child and I didn't know how to work a VHS. It sounds VHS. like a little bit you do, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, a, a little bit, but also, and but I, that's the um, only other one I kept coming back to. So I was like... Yeah. Let's let's go esoteric. Uh, <laughs> anyone got a least less esoteric one? <laughs> Fran, a little happier. Oh well, I was going to talk about my soul that got sacrificed when I was a child to Cartoon Network, but uh, I'll just oh, you're it. you're too you're too old for the Satanic Panic. How did that happen? Jeez, I mean, too young. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't line no. up. <laughs> but before before we record this episode, I spent about four hours looking through databases of Transformer toys to find the specific name of the Transformer that I my brother snapped in half on me when I was <laughs> when I was about seven or eight years old. It was one of it was like a, a boat that could be pulled apart and attached to Optimus Prime as like one of those like Amada, like a mega transformation. Yeah. Like robot when they all join things. in together. Yeah. Like in and, Power Rangers when they all. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like the Megazoid. And I was playing with it one time in the lounge room 
and I was holding it there and my brother literally runs up across the lounge room, boots it. I'm holding the legs. The torso goes flying. Things fucking ruined. Uh, obviously never got replaced because Transformers, even then, I don't know how much they cost now, but they were fucking expensive. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the worst part was I didn't even have the Optimus Prime that it mixed with. So like I never even got to see its full potential and it got snapped in half. <laughs> And then, lo and behold, that year for Christmas, I got the Optimus Prime that it's supposed to connect to, but I didn't have the other thing anymore. I didn't have the heart to tell mum. Uh, obviously, anyone listening to this podcast knows Santa's not real, so sorry about that one if you didn't. Santa's not um, real, sorry. That, yeah, I had to... What I had the to, like, fuck? Can I bring that back from my childhood, what Grant yeah, just took yeah. away from me? Yeah, can I get my teeth back as well, thanks? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, parents, and then after... your parents probably have them in a jar, you know that, right? Uh, I hope not. That'd be terrifying, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, and then yeah, it got annihilated. My mum got me the Optimus Prime that goes with for Christmas. I just didn't have the heart to tell her that the uh, the other half is literally two more halves now. <laughs> <laughs> the other quarters are gone. So oh, that God. yeah, that's that's mine. How about oh, you, Josh? Bless. I'm glad uh, the dog came in to comfort you for this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, my... Just in the background. <laughs> I sometimes, like, I, I feel like I have to uh, prefix my parents. My, my parents are some of the loveliest human beings in the fact. Like, I actually get made fun of for how lovely my parents are. We're, like, we're quite literally the nuclear family, but there is, like... Like, then, like every now and again, like like out of context, things seem bad. So my dad's a bit of a hoarder, and my mum's really not. My mum loves to get rid of things, and so like when we would stop playing with toys, my mum would just donate them, like without even really asking or anything like that. <laughs> like because that was just ah, oh, you don't play with these things anymore. Off to the op shop they go. And I, I uh, br- to bring this episode full circle, I was playing magic the gathering when i was a kid like i i got so excited when people got back into magic in like the like you know the 2010s and whatnot because i was yeah. playing it in like i i had a couple of decks in i would have been playing it 96 97 but they were old i remember them being old then which means still running that these, around naked then <laughs> nice which means that these decks are probably from 95 or even 94 which means that i was probably as a kid fucking around with, with cards alpha. from yeah <laughs> Like, like I don't, I don't think they would have been alpha, but probably again, probably not beta, but probably limited. Revised, like I was, prob- I was maybe. probably playing with limited, may- yeah, maybe unlimited cards. Um, which today, if I like, fuck, if I was like holding like a black lotus from back then or something like that, and just had no idea because no one knew what these cards were worth, like. And I, I asked my mom because I rem- I specifically because I have that you know those those autistic yeah. memory powers I can picture specifically it was in the old I like it, you know, Neapolitan ice cream the 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 chocolate <laughs> vanilla strawberry yeah. used to come in this this silver tub and like we had like we would have it a lot and I remember specifically the magic cards are in that tub and so I've told my mom so many times I was like can you just like look just in case and mom was like no no I've definitely like she can't remember specifically with Danny but she's like but no no it's gone and so I've told her I was like you know like there's a chance those cards are worth like thousands of dollars now. They, I mean, they wouldn't have been because like, I also specifically remember like wrapping them in rubber a rubber band. band. Holding them. <laughs> yeah, holding them together and like, throwing them in boxes. And so they would have been fucked. But like, yeah, I, I have very vivid memories of like the mid nineties playing Magic the Gathering when it was just this little thing. And yeah, I, I don't know what's happened to those cards. Um, oh my God. Yeah, but they, I mean, there could be like a stack of God knows what. There could there could be black lotuses or the fucking the original like fucking power gems or whatever somewhere in my parents' house, maybe because they still live just, in the just, same house. Just wait for them to die and then have a good look around. <laughs> Sorry. My mum's gonna hear this, so I'm gonna be like, no, I would never do such a thing ever, mum. Hi, Josh's mum. <laughs> not do that. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, um, I mean, that's if I could bring back one thing from my childhood, it would be those magic cards just to find out what was in them. Y'all, it just occurred to me that we are all obviously psychopaths because why True. did none of us say our childhood pets? <laughs> oh my God. I could bring back Banjo. Oh, hot damn. We're all going to hell. That's it. Oh, no. I wouldn't want Missy to suffer in this world again. 
Oh. <laughs> uh, no, Jemima is bad cat. enough the first time. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jemima is the reason that I'm not a cat person. So, uh, <laughs> no, I think I'm quite happy with my Rudy who just likes to sleep and doesn't attack me. Oh, my cat <laughs> attacks me. Look, I think maybe I'm just looking for a new pet. Yeah. She's been a loaf of bread on the floor now, so it's all got a, right. You got a pet cemetery, that one. <laughs> uh, no, no, we called that one Boot Hill. It was the hill on my parents' farm, and they buried all the dead animals there. That makes oh. it sound a lot worse than it was. We had chooks and stuff. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, was that right near the cassowaries? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the ones taken out by the cassowaries. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But you got to let us know, dear listener, what is the one thing that you would bring back from your childhood on a, yeah, on the Friday after this podcast has been posted, uh, there'll be some sort of brilliant Photoshop job done by me uh, posted on there, but then go back through all the other ones as well. If you haven't answered the the couple that we've done so far, there's some, there's some wonderful questions out there. You know, which musician would you have in a zombie apocalypse? Who would win in a fight? I want to, a win. there's, um, you know, the best dog as well as in there. Um, and if you have any suggestions, yeah. holler at us. If there's a hypothetical you want us to nitpick apart or turn really dark, Ooh. which apparently I do at the moment, <laughs> <laughs> then, then let us know. I can, I can shit all over your dreams. I love it. I love it. I really, really do. Uh, yeah, like and subscribe. If you're watching on uh, YouTube, subscribe to YouTube. If you're listening on the podcast, go and subscribe on YouTube anyway. Do the hashtags. Is, do the yeah, things. There's, Hashtag there's more. B&B. Yeah, there's more YouTube coming. Uh, speaking of D&D, I have an exciting update for you two that I'm going to tell you once this podcast is finished about <gasps> a, a, a Northside Nerds D&D campaign idea that uh, we uh, might be concocting up. It's still probably a little bit off, but um, uh, yeah, there is a very exciting idea for a, D- a Northside Nerds D&D campaign that I think we're going to put together. So um, <laughs> stay tuned to the Northside Nerds YouTube for that, oh, uh, the socials. We'll, we'll obviously be talking about it here as well, but um, yeah. We appreciate you listening to this podcast. And uh, Grant Marky, I appreciate you nerdy. too. Keep it fucking nerdy. Yeah, right? I appreciate you, yeah. Grant. But yeah, keep it fucking nerdy. <laughs> 2022. We did have an actual sign off, but we've all forgotten it. So. <laughs> I was trying to think of an earlier link. <laughs> Bl- just insert blast beats here. <laughs> yeah, yes. Did we have a... Da, 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 da. I've already forgotten. <laughs> I would like to know more.